what is going on people so listen i'm out here over in big old south west london Battersea, and i'm actually at the power station i've been wanting to visit this place for a long time i've actually been inside already and it looks absolutely amazing i'm actually really taken aback by how cool uh, this building is but yeah i thought you know what it would be nice to come and see whether it will be worth the visit, whether it's worth passing through to see what he's saying. And now we're here, so we're gonna have a quick look. This used to be an old electric power station, but now they've turned it into like a big shopping center. Um, and to be honest with you, the, the building is pretty amazing. I love my architecture, my buildings already, but there's lots going on here. You can see people skating over there, lots of different things. But yeah, do you know what? Let's talk for me, let's get inside here. Let's see what this place is saying because it looks absolutely dope. Okay, let's have a look. So a couple of fun facts about Battersea Power Station. In 1997, when the, when the power station was still derelict and it was owned by a Hong Kong developer called Parkview, Michael Jackson took a tour of the building and he wanted it to be a self-contained fantasy centre. Now that didn't go through but there's been loads of different types of um, proposals for the building since then it was meant to be a football ground a bunch of cinemas casino a mosque at one point a museum or a gallery or even a noddy theme park which i don't think that would have went down too well the power station actually was started in 1930 in early 1930s and it ran right until the early 1980s the power station at its peak was producing one-fifth of london's power supplying some of the london's most recognizable land marks like the House of Parliament and Buckingham Palace. So this building is pretty big man, it is pretty pretty big. There was one part where I was walking it was like a big kind of atrium area and then when I was walking a little bit more there was another part of the building which was absolutely massive so this is it down here. Look, kind of have a little bit of food, a little bit of window shopping. Look at that. Wow mate, this building is crazy. So really it's about time they kind of done something with it and the space is beautiful really really nice it reminds me of um, there's a shopping mall in Berlin called the mall of Berlin <laughs> it reminds me a lot of this the shopping malls in Berlin are quite nice actually the cinema in here as well yeah there just seems to be lots lots going on like even if it's just to come down for the day and look around at the shops get some food I would say it's worth coming down just for that for a day out with the family there's not a mad amount here there's more places to eat if anything but in terms of stores i think i saw apc there's a coupon there's a nike adidas mulberry ralph lauren reese um, there's rolex iwc if you're into watches i saw a tudor tudor watches as well there was a cartier store as well so yes yeah, so a top floor is for all the food second floor is more food and coffee shops and places to eat by the look of it. So there was an Arcturic store, I really went in there, it seemed quite cool. Um, super dry, don't think anyone's interested in super dry these days, apart from me and Kicks Official. <laughs> right, that's the Arcturic store in there, so let's go and have a look. So a lot of people never knew this, but in 2005, Arcturix was sold to a Finnish retailer called Ama Sports. Now, Ama Sports in 2019 was purchased by a Chinese retailer called Anta Sports. <laughs> I know, it's crazy. They bought their controlling stake in 56% in Ama. So is it fair to say that Arcturix is over 50% Chinese owned. I mean, originally they were a Canadian company, but so many companies now, they get bought, sold. Someone else has got their kind of like shares or controlling stakes within the company so sometimes you might think a company is from a certain country or has a certain heritage but actually the owners are from somewhere else because they've been bought out but they still do really good clothing i love their jackets and personally i think brands like arcturix um 66 north a lot of these type of technical jackets are for me are going to be the jackets that are people are going to be looking out for moving forward especially with the rise of designer prices so in terms of stores you're probably not going to get the most excitement from these stores but again I, I would just come here for more of a day out more for food really or just to hang out uh, in terms of shopping there might not be as many of the brands that us guys love it's probably more tuned towards females if i'm to be honest with you i mean look we've got an apc here um which is a cool brand but it's not really for me I got a workout space. This is um, Under Armour, which is basically owned by Nike, I believe. 
I think you'll probably find more of the high street stuff here, so Mango, Skechers, um, got North Face, Office, not the most exciting for brands. Well, depending on what you want, really. But like Levi's, Abercrombie and Fitch. Got an office over here. Got office. Although I prefer Offspring. Got the North Face. Just gonna have a look at North Face. Serious bag, this is. Now, this jacket here is called the North Face Remastered version. This is actually one of my favorite jackets for this year. I wear it all the time. I've got one in blue. It's waterproof. And yeah, I, I love that jacket. Really, really good pickup. But get it on sale because RIP was quite expensive. I mean, personally, I find North Face to be quite reasonable. Reasonable price, not too bad at all. I mean, I don't you know how it is. Compared to a lot of these, higher price brands which are not offering the same type of functionality uh, I think brands like North Face are really good personally even though they've gone up in price a little bit but they're still reasonable compared to the rest of these guys so here we got the Rolex store now uh, which was fined 100 million pounds apparently you know a lot of people on our Facebook group they really talk highly of this brand too though Okay, here's Nike, let's see. It's not an outlet store, but I think there are some sales, so let's have a look. Now, this Nike store only does running stuff, trading stuff, and yoga, so I get the feeling that you're not gonna get the full experience from this store. Um, I wasn't really too blown away by this store as well. I mean, to be honest with you, Nike, I'm not gonna lie, I've kind of, uh, kind of, I, think Nike, I personally think Nike's kind of fallen off a little bit um, as of the last couple of years. The quality on the stuff is, ugh, mate, it's it's not great. It's just not great. Um, I did have quite a few tracksuits before that I purchased and they did not last long at all. So Nike is one of those brands that I kind of stay away from a little bit, if I'm to be honest with you. The only things you might see me get from there would be some of the tracksuit bottoms, possibly a hoodie, maybe some of the trainers. But nowadays I find myself just sticking to my old trainers because I've got quite a lot of Air Max ones that I used to, that I've collected from back in the day. And I'm actually looking for other brands now aside from Nike for my kind of sportswear and looking at different trainers as well. Like even on running, Salaman um, is another trainer that I've been looking at, Hoka and also um, New Balance. This year I'm just running with things that are a little bit different to be honest. I could never bring myself to pay full price for Nike anymore. I just can't do it. It needs to be on sale, man. I just think the quality of Nike stuff over the years has really gotten bad, man. Like the tracksuits just feel so flimsy now. It's really bad. So I, I couldn't, I couldn't personally pay full price on Nike. I have to get that on sale, or I have to probably even get that on pre-owned because sale prices, I mean, full RRP prices are just not, not, not the one. They're not the one. That's the Apple store there. I used to work in Apple store back in Regent Street, way back when. It's a great store. But it's Ralph Lauren store. Yeah. Yeah. Different, isn't it? Store there, old school brand. Remember Hackett? We used to get the Hackett polos back in the day. Then you've got Uniqlo. Um, one of my guys always bangs on about Uniqlo and the quality, especially for t-shirts, blanks. And he's right. I've got a couple of t-shirts from here, um, sweatshirts. It's good stuff. You don't want to spend too much money, you want some good quality blanks, then Uniqlo is definitely one to look out for. It's so big in there. Oh, ice cream. Hello. Oh, apologies. It's called Venti. <laughs> I called it Vendi. I swear I just make this stuff up. But yeah, that looks, uh, that looks quite good. So that's pretty much it. I mean, this building is massive. It's very, very big. And I just saw a super dry over there. So this is the this is what the building looks like from the outside and as you can see if you look at this structure it is massive so here's the building
So guys, that is it. There is not really much to report. It was just a quick run through to see what this place was saying. And uh, I think it's really good. So if you're local, you're head, thinking of heading down to uh, Southwest London for a little uh, day out with the family or your mates, or even like a date, you need to come and do a little hanging out. This could be a good spot, guys. Battersea Power Station could be one to check out, okay? Listen, I'm signing out. I hope you enjoyed this video. I've got lots more coming. If there's any places you want me to check out, whether it's worth it, then leave a comment in the comments box below and I will check that out, okay? All right, guys, I'm out of there. Peace.